That's what it's called. Three, two, one. Hello there, and welcome to the final of the Elite Invitational 2v2 series. This event has been run by Olvaldi and Kurihi. And here are your finalists from the West. You have none other than probably one of the greatest 2 versus 2 players of all time. And indeed, in this game series in total, it is, of course, Nagano. Playing as the Soviet's urban defense tactics locked in. His teammates is a Brit, and he's playing as the Brits. It's Isildur, who now wants to be known as Izzy in this community henceforth. He actually gave me that notification recently. Their opponents, well, only the winner of the biggest two versus two tournament of all time, back from the brink of exile. It is indeed Kimbo, playing as the Wehrmacht and Blitzkrieg Doctrine. Very interesting commander for this 2 vs 2 tournament. So I'll just let that hover over your screen because it's not one we often see. Um, Asia Mint, only like the best newcomer to the KOTU scene for half a decade. This guy is a machine. He's also playing as OKW. You're seeing the first action between these two infantry sections, taking one of the Stern Pioneer models down of Asia Mint. And he's also locked in, by the way. That's right, the sunglasses of Professor Cool, it is indeed Special Operations Doctrine. He's probably got a name, that commander. But uh, Professor Cool will do. We have the conscripts emerging from Nagano. They're looking to encircle the Grenadiers of Kimbo. Where's Kimbo's MG in all this? There it is, set up to stop the flank of said conscripts. Good sight and provision by your Polish prodigy. <laughs> no, he isn't Progedy. It isn't he, Kimbo. Kappa. Folks, Grenadier is coming to help out. Good synergy of play by the Eastern Assassins. The map is Road to Baku. And it's by Blavik Dream, supporter of um, the stream. I'm actually streaming this live on Twitch. I'll do that going forward. Um, the reason being is it takes me about half an hour to get it from Twitch to YouTube. It takes me 12 hours to get it from my computer to YouTube. Don't know why that is. Just blame YouTube. Folks Grenadiers are behind this shard. A good cover against the... Well, they, they thought they did, but they were outgunned anyway against um, double infantry sections in the crater there. Meanwhile, we have this interesting trench formation as we've got combat engineers joining the fray. Pioneers pushed away. Conscripts from behind. I wish it was a bale of hay, but it is indeed sandbags. Trucks coming up for Asia Let's keep an eye on what it's going to become. As the MGs throw in lead down range. Ah, we've got the Universal Carrier upgrading to the Vickers. It looks like we're going to see a south-north split very soon, unless these infantry sections can hold. Stern Pioneers still have no kills. They're coming in against the light cover infantry section. They're going to win that battle. Meanwhile, we've got Foch Grenadiers and Grenadiers in position. Conscripts are trying to find an angle on them, but we now have the Rotten 9 Flamethrower forcing away the MG42. Good flank by Nagano. Low health Grenadier here. Gonna have to keep an eye on that one. Indeed, he retreats it away. And here comes that Universal Carrier. Let's check out the north where the infantry sections have still not been able to win that battle. Back in the south, you see is throwing lead in many a Grenadier's face. MG42 set up in a defensive posture. Waiting for a flank. Stone Pioneer is forced away. I'd have to say, the starting early game does seem to have gone into Isilda and Nagano's favour. All four commanders chosen. I did have a YouTube comment the other day saying, can I talk more about bulletins? To be honest, I take it for granted that most players are, aren't interested in bulletins. Many new players will find themselves being, but the advantages given by them are often very slender. But you will find that these players will be playing with the best uh, bulletins they, they can find. So they should give you an advantage. Nagano's going for all infantry stuff. All giving him a little bit more fighting capacity. And to be honest, if you think about how much your infantry are in combat at any one time, infantry bulletins tend to be the most logical choice. We have a Silda with better um, range on his Mills bombs, aka grenades, and more infantry bulletins. And you'll notice uh, most OKW players like to get a 7% medical supply um, bulletin because you often end up relying on them so much, so it ends up adding up. He's also got, look at that, he can get a half-track out 75% faster. That's a troll bulletin, he's joking with that one. 
and a 5% increased movement speed. And this is Asia Mint telling you, you new players, that bulletins really don't matter very much. If one of the best and most analytical players in the game right now, top four worldwide, does troll bulletins in a game except for one, as OKW, that tells you everything you need to know. Kimbo does, however, have the very, very good um, Faust 7% increased range. So there are a couple that actually matter, um, but most do not. Here we go, we've got the battle boiling over once more as three folks are in your squads with an incendiary grenade leading the fray. The Universal Carrier is waiting, we've got some good mines as well from Nagano, both of them. LMG's upgraded for Kimbo. He's turning those grenadiers into Terminator squads. He's also got the 222 joining the fray, jumping over the railway line there. Do we have a teenage? No, we do not. He's pretending he does, and now he's forced away. Nagano dared pretend and was caught out doing so. Let's follow the 222 in its journey up north. And let's take in a little bit of this map, see some of the beauty of it. Love it, Gene's put a lot of work into making a road based map. Sometimes they're awful. This one seems pretty decent, though. It's got a good amount of um, craters and such to break up, and it's not negative cover, you'll notice. It is just a road going to Baku. Rifle nade threatened. Oh, it was not threatened, it was used. More than enough to force Nagano away. It seems that uh, Asia Mint and Kimbo, the Polish Korean connection, are getting very hot and heavy into this one. 222 eats a six pounder shot. There's also um, an M42 waiting, and there you go. Excellent bait and switch by Isilda. And Kimbo took it and paid the price. 30 fuel down the drain. Near yeah, that's many engagements boiling over. This is what I was drawn to. The double MG 42s. One of them's the light machine gun variant. M42 is going to destroy this cover or try to. Let's see if that's possible. A little bit of elevation on this map, you'll notice. That can actually um, cause issues sometimes. Let's hope it doesn't. As I think it just ate a shot, and we now have the Pumas out looking to finish off the UC. But again, the AT guns are waiting from behind this site blocker. They're reversing into position. Oh, gets the kill. Needs to reverse away Asia Mint, showing Kimbo how to do it, basically. With a little bit more uh, luck, it might be. But still, having the balls to do exactly what your teammate tried to do prior and um, get away with it takes a lot of conviction in your abilities. I'm talking about abilities. Many abilities are starting to be ready for a Silda. Let's go over to his um, target profile. He's actually building Royal Engineers right now, so maybe getting flamethrowers on them. An unit is ready for but in the late game, we have the access to the juicy, juicy AVRE. I think it's... is it... It's something vehicle Royal Engineers, isn't it? What does the A stand for? I always forget what AVRE stands for. I am going to look at live chat. I'm trying not to get spoiled because this tournament game's already been played. And I have no idea who wins. Um, might be Armoured Vehicle? Royal Engineers? Something silly like that? <laughs> Makes no sense. Could be that. Ah, here you go. Thought he might get the flamethrower. And indeed he has. He's looking for a flank around this crane. Oh, we've got the MG's going to die. MG34 down to the Tommy Blob. Royal Engineers also coming in from the sides. Folks, Grandius recrew, and he somehow gets away with it. Let's look out for other engagements as we go to the TAC map for the first time. Just um, survey how this map works, where its cutoffs are. The big juicy cutoff is here, and also here. Very deep into enemy territory. Easy, you can get it off, though. We'll look, have a little look at these um, Panzer Grenadiers being forced away here. As the Puma makes its presence felt once more. Check out the south where um, Nagano's now got his T-70. And he's going to... Oh, the Grenadiers are already out of there. He sensed the danger, did Kimbo, and he got out of there as soon as he possibly could do. Tommy Blob's on the move. Don't worry, that's a Nagano mine. Still not detonated after all this time. He's going to try and catch one of these units out. But he's been surveyed. No, he hasn't. T70. Still trying to find its first kill. Let's have a look at Kimbo's teching. He hasn't got any AT out yet. That's usually a, a danger. Especially um, entering the 10th minute. And there you go. He's going to build a pack 40. Does that make sense? 
back in base. He's got the bunker up. His teammate has gotten, obviously, you know he's gotten mechanized, but still no sign of a Schwer. Check out this engagement. Just got infantry sections versus folks from ideas and MG34 as well. And let's check out the bases. You can see that we're currently getting Mills bombs. And we, of course, we've got the Tankovi Battalion Command up. People in chat are saying it is. Um, oh. There you go. Mine just detonated, killing two Sturm Pioneers. That's a juicy mine. Sturm Gewehrs upgrading on the Folks Grenadiers. Back in the center. Panzer Grenadiers. Oh, going to get punished by the T70. Faust tried to come in. We had a grenade on a tree, but Asian Mint didn't take the bait. He held firm. He threw his own grenade. It was a bundle nade, actually. Kimbo threw it. Nice bait, nice uh, switching of tactics there. Great synergy between the Eastern Assassins. First Grenadiers force away the Royal Engineers. Oh, nice grenade there. Oh, very juicy. Straight in the hole. And you know, a grenade is so much more dangerous in close, confined areas. And you saw the advantage of that there. One of those great um, co-mechanics that actually holds true to real life. Like so much does in this game, actually. It's all a microcosm for warfare. It's like a diorama. And many of it has realistic elements, even though it's um, absurdly arcadey and silly. It does have some um, really cool uh, aspects. MG42 is... Behind this lovely assembly here, as the royal, the combat engineers rather, are obtaining their fifth kill. You never catch them being called royal, they're communists. Or they're, no, they're not communists. They are probably conscripted into the army of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Pack 40 is possibly in a little bit of a danger, dangerous area in terms of the uh, suppression of the map there. Oh, Puma finds a T-70 though. I'll have a look at the double baby AT guns. We've got a crash or a kindergarten of uh, AT guns. Nice shots by the T-70. Finally getting its first kill. Panzer Grenadier is forcing away the conscripts. Puma Got shot by this uh, M42 there, I believe. And the Pac-40 finds the T-70. If the Puma had hit, maybe that could have been a kill. Panzer Grenadiers. There is a tripwire flare for you. All the manpower down the drain. Never to be seen again. First Grenadiers get behind this lovely, lovely heavy cover. But flamethrowers do not care about that. We have um, the shock troops coming out for Nagano. I just bless it indeed. We have the Stukas of Fus coming out for Asia Mint. Meanwhile, in the south, M42 is holding firm. But here comes the advance of the LMGs of the Grenadiers. And he's going to have to back out of that situation. Stern Pioneers also. First Stukas of Fus is somewhere over here. There he is. Ah, he's attacking the victory point in a show of sheer domination. Saying, I have these rockets and I'm prepared to use them. You best surrender. And, um, you know, many people suggest that's what the Americans could have done with their nuclear bombs. Maybe, like, landed them on a field and just shown, shown the world what they had capable. But, um, you know, there is also the... The idea that if you've got something, you may as well use it. Look at these AT guns. They're ready. They're an open target. Maybe you'll try again next time and get more lucky. Cromwell on the field for Izzy. Is he going to hit? <laughs> I'm going to use that pun a lot. You can hear it coming. Pioneer's been forced away. LMG Grenadier is in a bit of a dire strait. This one has only two soldats remaining. But the Tommies are... Oh, there you go. What a grenade. Double grenade on retreat. Oh, he was just off target there. He could—he overshot. If only he didn't have the bulletin. He threw 7% too far. <laughs> First Grenadier is just about surviving up north as this uh, Cromwell's got his third kill already. 
Meanwhile, in the centre, that's the next target as the um, six pound is being forced away, and the Cromwell indeed finds an angle. Uh, so does the Puma. Don't forget, there's that mine that's still not gone off. This no, it's an M6 mine now, been replaced. Very good mining in this game from the Allies. Puma's been snared by that heat grenade. Baby AT guns couldn't find him, however. Folks Grundy is now in dire straits. Possibly a grenade on retreat. Is it, will he be better luck this time? Or is he just going to try and gut him down? Doesn't need to, because the T-17 and the Cromwell have eaten him up for breakfast. Meanwhile, Stone Pioneer is in dire straits. However, Royal Engineers couldn't take the heat. Nice shot through the trees there by the Cromwell. Raketten can't do the same. Meanwhile, we've got Panzer IV out for Kimbo. Pintle mount upgrading. Panzer Grenadiers don't have any cover to cower behind anymore, but this Pack 40 may finish the job on the Vet 2T70. Oh dear, oh dear. Hits the fence instead. Panzer IV's ready to kill now, as the LMGs are as well. Goes prone, trying to protect the Panzer Grenadiers' retreat. Can he do it? Stukas of can. Here he is. There's the angle. Can he acquire the target? Oh, that's a good one. Very good indeed. He got rid of a mine and some men. Could have been better. It was well targeted, though. You have to appreciate. Sometimes the uh, the bombs won't quite land where you intend, but uh, at least he was on target in a more macro sense. Good work, kill crew. That was a kill, allegedly. I don't know what he killed, though. Even detonated another mine. P Puma is prowling up north, just venturing north of the oil slick. Meanwhile, we got a Tommy Blob from Izzy. Ten kills on one, four on the other, and fifteen on the other. Only at veteran C two right now, which is soon to be veteran C three. Stern Pioneers running the gauntlet. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. Look at this low health squad. Puma's going to body block him. Oh, no phase through. She's lucky. Of course, you can phase through moving vehicles. <laughs> I'm sure Asia Mint knows that better than I. Katusha on the Raket and Verfa. Puma's doing an ungodly amount of damage for an anti tank vehicle. Ah, Raket is taken down. Can he crew it now? Needs some form of AT. Royal Engineers and Six Pounder are all coming in, but the, will the Raket and Verfa be stolen? Meanwhile, in the centre, the Panzer IV has been damaged as the Baby AT guns reposition. He's going to try and get this Raket and Verfa, but the Puma's trying to take him down to three soldiers. He's aiming. Dangerously so. Meanwhile, back in the south, here we go. We've got the LMG Grenadiers. They're amassed. AT guns reversing away as the Panzer Grenadiers dawn upon them. Conscripts, now seven men, trying to seek refuge behind their heavy cover. As this LMG death ball advances. Cromwell tried to stop the Raketenwerfer from being taken as indeed Isilda decided against the capture. And he was right to do so. Look at their victory points. I haven't even kept my eye on them, guys. Asia Mint and Kimbo are going to get taken out of this tournament before it even begins oh dear oh dear 18 minutes in the down to 158 victory points LMG Grenadiers venturing north across the road to Baku they've got nothing on their western flank they've got the Panzer IV with them in this spirited Panzer attacking force as the Stukas of Fus rains death from above. The Puma comes in as well. The Panzer IV is getting into position. Cromwell's reversing away. He fires a smoke round to protect the six pounder, but the Panzer IV goes straight past it, of course, looking for the Cromwell, looking to turn him into a ball of molten ash. LMGs take out the six pounder. We've got Tommy, Vet 3. Possibly getting eviscerated, but the Katusha saves the day. Not for Larry, though. Larry's dead, but. Maybe be able to keep the six pound. No. Okay, they both died. Very successful push there by Kimbo. There is no saving grace. Panzer IV looking for a juicy shot on the shock troops, and the shock troops know it and escape with all of their troop uh, troops. Well, the troopers, rather. That's the correct plural. Intact. That five folks, Grenadiers versus the Tommy Death Ball. 
new six pounder out. Katusha, by the way, has only gotten two kills thus far. Let's see what this uh, reconnaissance can see. You can see pretty much all the battlefield. There you go. This is the current engagement that we're missing. Puma. Oh my god, look at its kills. 11 infantry kills. Such a good vehicle. Of course, that was due to the independent infantry target acquisition patch that made all tank MGs target infantry as a priority over tanks. It means that the Puma just finds itself killing way more than it used to. Of course, they probably buffed the actual machine guns on it. Sukhsvish is way far up into enemy battle lines for its own good and reverses away as the Puma looks in. We've had an, an Ura as the shock troops join the fray. LMG's gunning them down, however. Will we see a grenade? Yes, we will. Kimba moves forward, though. That was very good play by him. He held firm, and then he took a step forward out of danger. It's rare you hear that. Puma's looking for a cheeky shot in. However, doesn't even find the penetration, and said gets penetrated itself twice. Where's that Stuka Zafusa? It is firing. Of course it is. AT guns are the target of choice. Just excellent two versus two play from Nagano. And what I mean by that is um, evasion of, of rocket artillery, especially Stukas, is pretty much key to winning it as allies in two versus two at a top level. If you can't evade Stuka rounds by going at strange angles as the baby AT guns have been eviscerated. They've got a good amount of veteracy. Nagano needs... Oh dear, he's losing all of it. Katusha to the rescue. But the Grenadiers again go forward. Actually might kill the Panzer IV at this rate. Now that would be funny. Getting an SU-85 as Nagano, but a little bit too late to the party. Silda is using flame mortar support on somewhere. Oh, on the retreat path. That's juicy, isn't it? Can he keep... No, the, both AT guns were destroyed. That's um, a 480 manpower loss. Puma now claiming his 12th infantry kill with two vehicles destroyed. Only veteracy too. How does that work? Just had a loss of an MG42. Seems that we, we missed one of Kimbo's Terminator Grenadiers going down. Panzer Grenadiers pick it up though, and they're in a spot of bother. Grenade on retreat, where is it? Oh, Asilda couldn't get it off. Now needs to rely on the Lee Enfield rifles with a lot of health on the surviving Soldaten. Panzer IV and Puma going for the crush there. Very juicy. Stern Pioneers also grouped infantry sections there from two squads. The Panzer IV can't hit a barn door though with a shotgun, it seems. Good firing by the Cromwell and the six-pounder that's been rebuilt, as you know. Panzer IV watches as the SU-85 targets it in horror. The SU-85 now marches on. Train on the tracks. Oh, gets the killing shot. Great play by Nagano, making up for his earlier losses with a fantastic killing touch. The conscript was spotting for him all the while. Good play indeed as the Puma pushes in. And the Stuka Zufus misses everything. Oh, it hits that silo. That's a cool bit of destruction for you. Not seen that one before. And I've been casting this game for a long time. This map's excellent. It really is. Bundle nade. Easily dodged there. But we are seeing that two victory points are going to be capped. Or well, three, actually, for Asia Mint and Kimbo. On 122 remaining. Comet tanks out for a Silder. Let's give that some uh, cinematic glory, shall we? Oh, look at that beauty. That is cool, isn't it? I might just cast like this. This is lovely. Raket and Ver for watching on as the Puma reverses the way. Puma still only veteran C2. I don't know how that works. Panzer Grenadiers. And now we have the Panzer IV command tank out for Kimbo, getting all those defensive buffs. And firing through the hedgerow is the Pack 40 veteran C2. Katusha's going to find him, though. Kimbo needs to reposition. 
course, he's targeting the AT guns. That's, that's the, always the safest target. Always has that pack-up time. Panzer Grenadiers retreating with their tail between their many legs. Oberseldorf have gone for the infrared STGs. I don't know if you've actually ever seen how these things worked in the Second World War, but they didn't look quite like this. They weren't quite as uh, easy to use, but you can imagine being Relic in 2014, trying to think how to make the OKW different to the Wehrmacht, and uh, yeah, finding um, some interesting ways, to put it politely. Comet reversing away, trying to get some nice parting shots on the Obers. 40 manpower per model lost. Grenadier is surviving in the south. The defensive buffs were not enough. Seems like he's replaced his one of his three grenadiers that he lost with a Panzer Grenadier. It's in the centre. Oh, that's a good one. That's very good. However, again, there you go, a Silda showing two v two prowess with the good artillery dodging. Oh, he's gone forward with the comet. He's looking to try and take out the mechanized, but the Puma's got him in his sights. Finally gaining that third star of veterancy. Long overdue. Must have run out of medals in the uh, medal factory in Germany. I can't think of a better joke than that. Of course, but it is always funny. Just how many medals started to be given out in the late part of the war. Many jokes were had. Oh, we here we go. The beautiful one is here. The Panther Command Tank is on the field going for a little crush. I think he got one Tommy there. Comets outmatched and outgunned Katusha. What a what an oh that could have been so much better that bundle lane. I think the light cover saved his life quite frankly. They weren't very grouped but they did get that um, low received accuracy. I don't know how it works. Low received accuracy might have helped somewhere. It did seem like it helped. Oh there you go. We just temporarily had an allied double cap, which means that the Axis are now down to 99 victory points. Nine and nine sig victory points. Falling for Kimbo and Asiamans. Got the Kraut Mower, as affectionately called in the game files. Shoe 85 versus Puma. Puma's bobbling over that moonscape. Looks like a moon buggy, doesn't it? Always made me laugh in Co. 1 with the physics when you had any craters like the tanks which go boink <laughs> over any of them, especially as the game advanced. And Co. 2 is a little bit more realistic, but the light vehicles will still do it. Getting this. Uh... Hey, that's cool. You've got this um... icon within an icon. Oh, he erupts into fire against the Cromwell this time. I did see that we've got another SU-85 out for Nagano. So, yeah, double tank destroyers for him. What a fearsome combo that'll be if he manages to get it up to veterancy. Looks like we've got a good flank from the Comet. Targeting the Panther. Again, only up to seven kills is the Stukas of Foos. Not exactly a stellar... Combat record for this time in the game. 28 minutes. Temporarily an Axis triple cap. Bundle nade easily dodged by Nagano. As the Panzer full command tanks forced away. M17 pushes in. That's an M5 with a cro the quad map suddenly becomes something else. Arriving. F there you go. A little bit of flame mortar support. And Kimbo feels the burn. And is forced away. Has to evacuate the premises and stand outside in the garden for a little while. Whilst uh, superior men with axes hammer his door down. Look at that nice change of scenery. It's got a lot of silt in it, this uh, river, hasn't it? Not quite know what's going on there. Maybe it's a phosphorus factory. SU-85's looking for the Puma. However, they get targeted themselves and fausted on delay. That's, that's the mitigation for the Faust misfire, by the way. Sometimes it takes a while for the animation to kick in. SU-85 trying to back up, but can't quite get out of there. Meanwhile, the Veteran C2 tank destroyer. And there's that bit of elevation coming to the rescue. 
The Veterans 2 1. Oh, and it's a miss, perhaps. How can that Puma survive? Six pounder somehow missed there. Vet 3. Grenadiers doing the same. Panther pushing in a vanilla Panther. This could be a, a massive assault here. Misses the SU 85, however. Pop Smoke pushes forward looking for a follow up. Bounces one shot and gets the follow up. We've got the Vet 2 equivalent on the riverbank trying to get some measure of vengeance. But it's a good protection of the flank by Isilda. He defended that because all of the tanks could have been taken out by a flank from the eastern side. Oh, look at that for Stuka Zafus. That could have been so much worse. Oh my god, Isilda's heart must be pumping out of his chest. He's lost a Cromwell though. But he had all of his units very grouped in a World War One style. Walk slowly towards enemy machine guns fashion. And um, yeah, that could have been a lot worse. Comet getting targeted by the now Vetro C4 Puma. Nearly Vetro C5. Panther Command Tank in overdrive mode. Or whatever it's called for a Panther. Combat Blitz. Not overdrive, Combat Blitz. Here's that group. Where's the grenade coming? Oh, the grenade was on the Panzer Grenadiers. And they're finished off. I was not expecting that. I was expecting a bundle made from them. And of course, we got the Mills bombs from Isilda. You're in a bad part of town, son. Oh dear, oh dear. Kimbo, his Panzer Command Tank. Panther and Panzer. Uh, sorry, Pack 40 are in dire straits right now. The Pioneers are trying to repair them. But the advance just does not stop. You've got the Vet 3 now. S-85 with that superior rate of fire and penetration coming in to finish the job. We've got Gallantry from the Grenadiers with the LMG trying to protect the flank as the Pioneers offer themselves as a as a fatality there. Meanwhile, the Panther's been damaged engine, but there's, there is follow-up. Of course there is. There's double six-pounders ready. You've got Vet 5. First Grenadiers could be dying. He just wants to keep these guys alive. Can't do so. Meanwhile, Katusha's firing on a Groot. Kimbo target could actually take out the Panzer IV here. Panzer IV goes forward to evade. Any rockets hits and it's down and out. Oh, but this toxic silo t helps there as the Comet pushes in against the now Vetro C5 Puma. Somehow all of um, Asia Mint's units survived. Panzer IV is still alive. Oh, we've just had... There it is. The M17 was taken out by this very low health panther of Kimbo. Amazing play there to go so far forward. Stuka Zafus gets a good assassination there on Asia Mint. From Asia Mint on uh, Isilda's capping units. I believe that was um, possibly... Yeah, it was infantry section. And... Ah, that was up there, was it? Yeah, indeed, it was a Panzer Werf on the six-pounder. Kimbo went for his opponent's opponent. Uh, sorry, teammate's opponent in the north. Changed his targets. Six-pounder. Forces away the Puma. It's a diff and we do now have the AVRE on the field. He's done one petard mortar. I'm sure he'll do some more. I'm pretty sure of it. 49 victory points only remaining for the Axis. We're going to have to see not only a stand, we're going to have to see a comeback in order for them to win this one. And how do you do that? Do you go for a grind? Do you try and win an endurance battle? Because it doesn't look likely to me that Nagano and Isilda, two of the greatest two versus two players of all time. As the Zis finds its target. Could even finish off the Vet 3 MG there. Just about escapes the Veil. Um, or do you somehow go for some crazy all-in attack? There's only two ways to go about it. But uh, Nagano and Silda, they know now they just need to get two victory points and sit on them for a while. They just need for their opponents to make one mistake and they can capitalize and finish off this game. Oh, and they, could this be the mistake they need? Katusha finding the Grenadiers, perhaps. Oh, bundle nade. Half dodged. Not dodged there from the conscripts. They could get finished off now. There's that Stuka Zufus. As the SU 85s are now a, a pair again. Trying to take out that uh, 
Panther as the Tommies are surviving all kinds of artillery. More flame mortar support. Here comes the cavalry, though. We've got a Panther and a Pack 40 as the SU 85s, of course. Two trains on a carriage have to be very well provided for. Oh, nice body block there by Kimbo. He bundle naded him and then he body blocked him with the drag clicks. Expert play. Comet. Looking for some shots from the side. Looks to me that the Allies may be about to finish this game off. They've got the Royal Engineers in the north capping there with the mines, with mines coming down. Comet's finding good shots on the Panther, going to keep him out of battle. Kimbo's making a vital cap in the south. Could keep them alive for a little while longer. But here it comes, the double cap's now in. They're dropping down to 40 victory points almost instantly. Reconnaissance for Kimbo. Let's have a look what he can see. See if you can actually target the plane. You can't. Never mind. It would be cool if you could go on board with a plane like you can the British glider. Done that in a cast before. That was pretty cool. Trying to follow camera on it. Never mind. It's impossible. Just heard the plane go down. Have I? No, something else died, actually. Man of the Comet is dueling over the centre. Victory point-wise, the Axis have dropped to 33 now. Obersol Darton are capping the north. The south is in their hands. Meanwhile, we've got a stern battle here as conscripts are fighting for their very lives. Pack 40 finding a good shot there on the Comet as the Panther pushes in. Follows up with a miss. We've got double six-pounders could turn their sights. Here comes the rocket artillery. Could be a Tommy that dies as well. All targets survive. Panther pushes in, however. Churchill AVRE's not got on a single kill yet. However, it's uploaded and ready to go. Could it fire on the Obersal Dart and through the fence? Possibly. Yeah, he's going to go for it. Leaving himself exposed, however. Obersal Dart and all the prey pushes forward. Oh, and it's a shot blocker. He did everything for nothing there. AVRE possibly dying in misery. SU-85s have this dam in their way. Or is it? Can't do anything about it. Comet now climbs to its ninth kill event. Very costly foes. Both anti-tank guns to go down. Will this allow the Command Panther a chance? We've also had a good take out by the by Asiaman's Rocket and Verfa on one of the six pounders. Meanwhile, in the centre, Panzer IV Command Tank that is somehow are still alive. This has gone for a second Panzer Verfa. The first one, by the way, has only gotten four kills. We haven't missed anything by not seeing its actual attacks. Panzer Fall. Oh, good shots in on the infantry sections there. We're now seeing a triple cap as the Panzer Fall gets triply destroyed by double SU-85 and this gun combo. But a triple cap is now in for the Axis. We've got 33 victory points remaining. Yes, those Verfa of Panzers. Where's the target? Oh, yes! It was in the line of Nagano. Nagano walked into it. Good thinking by Kimbo to predict the path of his opponent. Opponent there, noticing that Nagano was going forward just like him, and he put the rocket salvo in his path. SU-85 gets poked and smoked by the Panther, but the Panther runs into two attack rounds. Stukas of Foos on the target. Panther still alive despite a main gun destroy critical. Surprised not playing on tournament mode. One of the SU-85s just gets taken out by the Rakat and Verfa at max range now. Now the AVR really may be about to get its first kill of the game. Third salvo. Let's have a look. No, it's a, such an easy target to run from, isn't it? Where's these Panzer Verfas? There they are. Just hoping to catch the AT guns as the VET-5 Puma rushes in and out with that superior mobility. Panzer IV command tank is on the warpath now. We haven't... Um, oh, there you go. Taking out the Zis gun on retreat. Comet pushes in. Trying to take out these Panzer Grenadiers. Oh, oh, gets the kill. And they die in a watery grave. Never to be seen again. Writhing out of it. Trying to survive like a scene from... Uh, it's over, Anakin. Oh, shit. I have the high ground, Anakin. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had to do that. Don't worry. I lowered it to quarter speed. 
Just reminded me of Revenge of the Sith. I'm sorry. Crawling out of the lava. You know what I'm going for there. Duke is a foos. Oh, take it, nearly taking out the uh, six-pounder. Infantry section is trying to hold firm. Try needs to get back in the victory point picture. They're going low now after this triple cap from Axis from the brink of defeat. As somehow making this extremely competitive once again. Weapon crew lost. That was the six-pounder taken out. AVR is still not to get a kill. Should not have had very good um, play with the... Indirect fire from Isilda there. Building another Comet to join his forces. However, the Panthers tagging in for the Puma. And the SU-85 taken out. That was the veteran unit for Nagano. Leaving him with not much else. Meanwhile, the Conscripts are forcing their way in against the Panzer IV command tank. But even with a damaged engine, that stub nose is still a low-velocity, volatile implements of infantry destruction more reconnaissance overflight by Kimbo making he's just got excellent use out of this all game long it's such a good commander for abilities isn't it got some booby traps in as well from Asia Mint Sobers Grenadiers versus Comet and Aviori there showing a lot of bravery possibly stupidity let's wait and see which one it is just a good Stukas of Foos round from Ageman, let's have a check on that. Things kills 20 now. Not too shabby. Obers standing strong on it. 17 kills. Still haven't got that fourth model. I know that'll tweak some of you. And the Allies are now down to 79 victory points. Panzer IV is flanking the Zis gun here. Meanwhile, we've got Conscripts looking to forge a way in. However, Vet 3 MG42 stands in their way. One of them gets around the the cone of fire there. Does, does he have Molotov something to speed this up? No, he does not. And we have now the KV-2 from Nagano. A little bit late to the party, but maybe this could be the vanquisher of the Axis that gets Nagano and Silda back into this game. KV-2 save as we've got an excellent flank by two, Cromwell, two Comets as well. The two Comets are coming from... The eastern side, and they've come full circle as the KV-2 gets a good shot in on the Panther. And the Comet finishes the job, but he gets taken out and turned by the Panther Command Tank and the Boomer. Meanwhile, the other Comet takes out the Panzer IV Command Tank. AVRE's now gotten his three kills by taking out the Pack 40. KV-2 marches on, looking for... There it is, a big shot on the Panther Command Tank. AVRE's now an idle sitting duck as the Puma races in to finish the job. KV-2, however, has rescued this victory point in combination now with a stolen MG-42. Good work by the conscripts there, but they need to get another victory point. And the Puma's looking to kill this weak, impotent AVRE. Can't quite penetrate. Heat rounds possibly could save the day. And Puma could not finish the job as it reverses away. Got a hold firm now. Possibly, if he could only merge into it. But he has no... the. Three conscripts got way off on the other side of the map. KV2 needs to get rid of this MG34. Big Stuka rounds coming in. Misses everything, giving allies but a chance. 22 victory points and damaged engine on the Puma from the Royal Engineers. KV2 against the Panther, trying to reverse away with that huge howitzer. Still targeting, we have no AT guns. Yes, we do, we have one more AT gun. It's a Zis gun. It's got to get round the dam to get a target off. Comets holding firm. Grenadiers, however, have forced away the conscripts and the MG42 looking to finish off the game. Keep an eye on the southern victory point. All of the Axis material is sticking there right now as the Grenadiers, the Terminator Grenadiers with the LMGs are looking to win the game for Kimbo and his teammate Panzerwerf has gone mad and just wants a bit of the action. He's acting as a diversionary tactic as all material is thrown into the centre of the battlefield. Here we go, got Panther pushing in and another Panzer Werfer just acting as a diversion perhaps. KV-2's in a target rich environment as <laughs> we see Deutschland forwards as Imperial Dane would say as the AVRE is taken out 
And we looks likely to see that indeed the Allies tick down to zero victory points. What a comeback with 33 remaining from Asia Mint and Kimbo. And spoiler alert, they win the entire tournament. This was the first game of the final best of three and they go on to win the whole thing. So GG well played to them versus Nagano and Isilda. And um, well played. Nice little uh, miniature eight team tournament. Um, well won by um, Dream Team of Asia Mint and Kimbo. We've done a lot of scrimming in one versus one um, recently, um, which obviously prepares them for the Master League um, 2 tournament, which we're going to be announcing the format and the presentation of in a week's time. Get really excited for that. I'm so proud of the tournament format. It's, I think it's probably going to knock uh, Man Libna's Weimar out of the park, to be fair. I think it's a really good advancement. It's what, what we're, we should all be about as a community. But you know what else is? Um, great map making like this with Road to Barku. Congratulations to Vovac Dream for what is certainly a fantastic 2 versus 2 map. And um, it's also fantastic to see we've got so many great high-level players and so many tournaments for them to play in. We've got um, we've got Master League leading leading the fray with um, Elite One versus One events, and we also got some great tournament support. We also have Ang Angry Dutchman with his own little Invitational coming up. I think Tightrope's been working on the Pacific Invitational coming up. Um, we've now got some two v two Invitational events as well. So it's all going down. Um, great competitive community we have. Um, I'm going to go on a well-earned holiday now. I'm going to go to Wales for a few days, which will be lovely. Um, past a recent accountancy exam, so I'm on a high. And yeah, glad I managed to get this cast in for you, everybody. Hope you have a lovely week. And um, if you're top-level players, get training. Get training on as many commanders as you can possibly play on. Because, as I say, ML2 is going to be... Ooh, we're in the mountains. Very nice. <laughs> oh, ah. What a map this is, Blavik Dream. This is cool. And congrats to K-Pen in chat, by the way, for excellent revisions on Bokaj. I uh, privately think it's possibly the uh, second best of the Corona Cup maps now. This is such a cool map, isn't it? He's put some excellent work on this. It's great to see some good 2v2 maps, because to be honest, that's one of the reasons that 2v2 is so crap. Um, on the large part for me is the maps aren't good. Um, but we're starting to see some much better maps coming through. Definitely, definitely, definitely not that one that we I was casting on in the tournament, though. What was it? Wolfhazer. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I don't like that map. There's a picture of A.E.'s mum head heading in the railway tunnel. Well, she's a wonderful woman. That is one of the most selfless beings of all time. So let's hope it's a shrine. And... Um, I'm actually looking for this now, Blavik Dream. <laughs> I'll just show everybody on YouTube uh, with with streaming live. I get I get greeted with some excellent comments such as these ones now. <laughs> That's always good. Uh, but thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> Need the payout for seventy five for cars downloads exactly. All right, guys, have a good week. Um, catch you later. Thank you and goodbye.